So I've been dealing a lot lately with clients who were not um, selected in the H-1B lottery, which immigration ran during the last week of March. And basically, I think the selection rate this year has been the lowest that it's ever been. For my own clients, only about 15% of those who registered were selected in the H-1B lottery. So what does that mean for all the other clients who were not chosen? We're now looking into what other possible options there might be for uh, those clients to stay in the United States. The harsh reality is that given the immigration laws that we have, there isn't like a huge menu of work visa options to begin with. I can talk about some of them and go over very briefly, you know, uh, what the requirements are, and then maybe hopefully one of these options might be available to you. So for one of my clients who was not selected, he is uh, an architect. And um, we are now looking into whether or not he might qualify for an O-1 visa. So some of you may know what an O-1 is, um, but for those of you who don't, it's a work visa for uh, people who can show that they have extraordinary ability in what they do. And I definitely have a core of um, clients who are architects who have been able to get O-1 visas approved um, for their work as architects. Just to go over the O-1 very briefly, you have to show to immigration that you meet at least three of their criteria for proving extraordinary ability. You know, for example, if you've been awarded um, some significant prize that's um, recognized on a, a national or an international level, that's one criteria. If you have uh, had your work uh, featured in media, prominent uh, newspapers, journals, magazines, um, then that's another uh, way that you can show that you um, have distinction for what you do. And then thirdly, if experts in the industry can write testimonials on your behalf, discussing your talents and your skills and showing that your work is different in some way from your peers, then that's a third uh, criteria. So just to be clear, just because someone can show that they have three different types of evidence of extraordinary ability doesn't mean that immigration will automatically approve your O-1 petition. In fact, immigration loves questioning O-1 applications, among other types of cases. So that's kind of the bare uh, minimum that you have to show in order to file it. Immigration is supposed to apply the standard of totality of the circumstances, which basically means that they'll look at the whole package and then come to a decision whether or not, as a whole, you've proven that you are extraordinary ability. Technically speaking, immigration is supposed to approve an O-1 petition or any petition for that matter uh, using a burden of proof known as preponderance of the evidence. Do they always stick to this? No. Do they always know what this means? No. In fact, many times when we file O-1 petitions, we can almost expect immigration to issue a request for evidence, even if it's strong uh, filing. Some officers may not necessarily be trained. Some of them may be simply too busy and just decide to issue a request in order to kind of put the burden back onto the client and the attorney. But we've been able to obtain approvals after submitting responses to these requests for evidence. So that's the O-1. And aside from the O-1, there's other types of work visas, but they are, you know, specific to the country of citizenship. So for example, there's a TN visa based on the NAFTA agreement. The TN is similar to the H-1B in that it's a visa for professionals, but there is a actually a list of occupations that qualify for TN. So it's a little more narrow than H-1B in that respect. And the other thing is that the TN is available only to citizens of Mexico or Canada. There's also an E-3, which is available for citizens of Australia and New Zealand. And the E-3 is also very similar to an H-1B in that it's for positions that are professional in nature. And, you know, we've handled E-3s uh, for clients in the past. The process is actually fairly straightforward. You can even apply at the U.S. consulate abroad instead of having to file a petition with USCIS. Most embassies are pretty friendly to E3 um, visa applications. Then there's also the H-1B-1, which is the H-1B visa, but for citizens of Singapore and Chileans. In all of my 20 
four years of practice, I think I only handled one such visa application for Singaporeans. I frankly don't have that many clients from Chile or Singapore. And then there are other visas such as the E1 or E2. Those are treaty trade or treaty investor visas, but you have to be a citizen of a country that actually has a treaty with the U.S. So those are the, the most of the other work visas that I handle that are not H-1B. If you have any questions or you think that you might be eligible for one of these other types of work visas, feel free to contact me. My name is Sue Yi, and you can find my contact information um, below underneath um, in my YouTube channel.